What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 of my favourite tips and tricks which will help you get more out of your Android phone. These aren't necessarily hacks or anything particularly complicated, most of them are just things you can do without even installing any apps. So I hope you enjoy the video. First up is taking control of your data. Within Android it is really easy to tweak a couple of settings which will help you save data and therefore save money. The first thing you want to do is enable data saver within data usage. This will severely limit which apps can actually access data in the background. This means that really heavy apps like Facebook and Facebook Messenger won't be continuously running in the background and burning through data. You can click on mobile data usage and this will give you a graph of how much data you've been using that month. If you then hit the gear icon, this will take you into a couple of settings. At the top here, you can choose your billing cycle. This is just the day that your contract starts within the month. You can then set a data warning. So if you get over this limit, your phone will send you a message and tell you. You can also then set a data limit, which is similar to the warning, except this will actually stop you going over that amount of data. Next up is unlocking the developer settings of your phone. If you go to settings and then scroll to the bottom and go to about phone, then scroll to the bottom again and you should see the build number of your phone. Then all you need to do is tap this seven times and this will unlock developer settings and put the developer settings option in your settings menu. So now you've unlocked your developer settings, let's have a look at a couple of things that you can do with it. Changing the speed and scaling of animations on your phone is one of the easiest things you can do to speed it up. By default, these will all be set to one. However, I suggest you take each one and drop it down to 0.5x or drop it down to naught if you want to have absolutely no animations and just make app switching really, really quick. This is especially noticeable on slightly older phones, so this is a really good way of getting a little bit of extra speed very easily. Next up we have safe mode, and you can get into this by holding down your power button, and then once the menu pops up, hold down on power off on the screen, and it will pop up and give you the option to reboot into safe mode. And this will disable all the apps that you've downloaded. This is really useful if you've downloaded an app, probably not from the Play Store, and it won't let you uninstall it. It's a fairly common virus. This will let you uninstall the application. Or if you've downloaded a malicious app that is trying to take control of your phone, you can boot into safe mode and really safely uninstall it. Next on this list, we actually have an app called Snap. Widgets are one of the best things about Android. They're a really easy way of getting loads of functionality and information straight on your home screen. But Snap takes this one step further and lets you use widgets across your phone in any application from your notification bar. You can set this up to launch from pulling from different parts of your notification bar. I've got it set so if I pull from the far right, it will launch a panel of widgets. These are really easy to customize. Just hit the gear icon and then hit the little yellow plus button at the bottom of the screen. You can then add any widget you like as if you were adding it to your home screen. You can then shuffle these around and organize them as you see fit. These are fully interactive. They work exactly like a normal widget would on your home screen. It's a really easy way of getting some extra functionality and putting those widgets right at your fingertips. Next on this list, I'm going to show you how you can create a link from your home screen directly to a web page. Now this is really easy to do. You just type in the URL of whatever website you want to go to, and then once it's loaded, go ahead and hit the three button overflow menu. Then if you scroll down the list, you should see the option that says add to home screen. Go ahead and click this, and this will generate an icon on your home screen, which will link straight to that website. And this does work for different custom launchers. And if you use it with a custom launcher, you can change the icon and some other cool little bits and pieces like that. Smart Lock has a bunch of different features which will let you disable or enable your lock screen depending on where you are, what you're doing, and other sort of environmental factors. First up we have on-body detection, and this just means if you unlock your phone and then put it in your pocket, it will recognize that it's still you using that phone and it won't re-lock it. Next up we have trusted places, and whenever you're at a trusted place, your phone will automatically be unlocked. So for example, I've got it set that when I'm at home, I don't need to lock my phone, but then when I go out and about, if I do lose my phone, it is gonna be locked. Next up is trusted devices. This is similar to trusted places, except it works with peripheral devices like headphones and smartwatches and that sort of thing. Next up, we have trusted face. This means if you're looking at your phone and it recognizes you, you won't need to put in a passcode. You can also add different people to this. So you can add your whole family to a tablet, for example, and all of you guys will be able to unlock that. And finally, on this list, we have trusted voice. And this is most useful if you want to be using OK Google commands when your screen is off. If your screen is locked, you can launch an OK Google command. It will do that command for you and it will also unlock your phone so you don't need to worry about unlocking it to see whatever information you're trying to search for. 
Next up is using Google Maps offline. This is really useful if you either don't have any credit or you are in a foreign place and your phone's running out of battery or anything like that and you need to be able to use a map still. The only caveat with this is that you do need to download them in advance. So for example, I've downloaded my work and my two home addresses. So if ever I'm lost around and about home, even if I don't have any signal or my phone is really, really low on battery, I can put it into airplane mode and I can still use maps. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to use navigation with this because you don't have the geolocation, but if you are in a pinch and you just need to sort of be able to see where you are in a bit of an old school way, then this is really useful. Next up is how to identify RAM hogs. So if you go back into developer settings and go to running services, you'll be able to see every single app that is currently running on your phone. And it will show you how many megabytes of memory each app is using. This allows you to identify really heavy apps like Facebook. And if you are having issues with your phone running a bit too slow, you can go ahead and uninstall these apps to speed it up. And finally on this list is encrypting your phone's data. This will take a while, so I recommend you plug your phone into charge and go away and do something else while it encrypts. Then every time you turn your device on, you'll have to input a password to decrypt your phone. This means if someone has your phone and they don't have your password, they won't be able to just pull data off it using a third party app. Although there is one thing to bear in mind, which is once you've encrypted all your data, you can't unencrypt it. The only way you can unencrypt your phone is by factory resetting it. But if you are a businessman or like a politician with important missile documents or something on your phone and you don't want anyone to be able to find it, then encrypting your phone can be a really good idea. So there you are guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed filming it. Let me know in the comments below which tips and tricks you are using and which of these 10 you found most useful. Go ahead and like this video if you've enjoyed it. You can follow me on all my social media whatnots with the links in the description. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.